controversial than the larger TXC discussion. We, we did the heavy lifting when we passed the overall TNC regulations. Uh, we wanted to make sure that TNCs, transportation network companies, were able to operate at the airport, but just like we don't want individuals to be circulating through the airport, burning gas, polluting the air, creating traffic congestion, and we do not allow taxis to, to cycle through. They're held in an off-site location. We created a separate uh, on-airport property but off-site uh, location for the TNCs so they can be dispatched as needed. Now, if you just walk into an airport and you walk out the front, we expect you to get into a taxi. But if you have an, an existing relationship with a TNC, whether it's Uber or Lyft or some other TNC, and uh, you've programmed a ride, we want you to be able to, to get off the plane and hit your app and have that vehicle dispatched appropriately. We think we have come up with a, a good solution. It creates a geofence, meaning the app only works on that off uh, that, that special parking lot we've created for the TMCs, or TMCs, and that, again, it's designed to keep them from trying to uh, jump the line or, or, or circulate, because the only way to know, since this is an app-based system, that you have a potential fare is uh, through the app, and the app will only work in that parking location. So we think, it, we think it's a good solution. And what about, uh, has Lyft still has no lift vehicles been permitted yet? Or? No lift vehicles have been permitted. Uh, I'm a, you know, my uh, comment to lift is that we went through these ordinances. They were part of the process. They were involved in the crafting of the ordinances. They talked to council members. There were several things that they asked for that I thought were reasonable and indicated that I would support them. But council didn't approve it. And uh, I have not heard from any council members that they want to open up the ordinance to allow lift a, a waiver or variance from the rules. What we did was focus on the public safety aspect and try to make, make sure that if you get into a vehicle for hire in Houston, that you have some assurance that the driver of that vehicle for hire is not going to do damage to you, that you, that it, that driver is insured, that they've been through a background check, that at least at the time they got their license, they uh, had been drug tested. You know, some of the things like, do they need a physical? I don't know that they really need a physical, but, uh, and, and a drug test is only as good as the day you take the, the drug test, but the criminal background check was non-negotiable and full commercial insurance from the moment the app comes on was non-negotiable. Uh, just a clarification on the uh, airport uh, geofence. Uh, a person who wants to use a Uber, right, when they arrive at the airport, they can still use their app in the airport? Yes, the, it works in the airport. Okay. As soon as they get off the plane, they right. open yeah, their right. app and they say, I want I need, okay. need a ride. Right. And it, it'll show them that there are cars sitting in this in this yeah. lot okay. that we've created for TNCs, right. and it'll show me show them how yeah. many cars are over there, right. and uh, that they can they mm -hmm. can I guess they hit accept. Mm -hmm. and, um, okay, but right the away. only place it doesn't work is in the airport. Uh, 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 well, the streets and, and, and again, and we right didn't want people trying to jump the line sure. and say maybe they'll come yeah. and and. Mm -hmm. pull over on a side street or, right. or hang out in mm -hmm. a parking lot. We want an orderly process. Right. And the way the orderly process will work is that in the airport building itself, if you're mm -hmm. the customer, and in this specified mm -hmm. lot, if you are the driver, the app works just like it would in any place yeah. else in the city of Houston. Okay. But in the rest of the airport property, the app will not work. Okay. Okay. Thank for, you. The, for the driver. Thank you. Yeah, this is sort of a separate topic, really. But Councilmember Mort Boykins was lauding um, some of the things he's been able to get done with the service district budgets, the $1 million pots, and we know some of those requests are sort of rolling in. What do you make of the requests you've seen so far? Do you think it sort of honors the intention 
um, of that funding. I know it's sort of controversial at the time. We have a list, uh, you know, we created a comprehensive list of the requests from different council members. I will say that at this point, the majority of the district council members have not made requests. That there have been a couple of very prolific council members, and for those council members, there was a definite, some of those council members, there was a definite learning process that, which is why, I, I, it's not that I think it's an inappropriate use of funds. I maintain my authority under the charter to do the, the, make the final decision. But for a lot of council members, they don't realize that they can't give money, for example, to nonprofit organizations, worthy nonprofit organizations, but we, we, we can't do that. And so what we've tried to do is take the requests, define the public purpose, and figure out how we can legally meet those requests. My concern with the process was that we are not putting money aside for, for future needs. They actually, in both for the capital side and the operating side, they took money that we had set aside for future reserves. So it's not the program itself, it's the fact that they were, we're not putting money away for the future. And that concerns sort of lingers then the idea that, hey, everyone goes for the public safety money, what happens if there's a leak? Something like that. Yeah. 